Hi everyone! Today we will be talking about King Chongzhu. He was the 22nd ruler of the Joseon Dynasty. And yeah, I think there is a lot to learn about him. So without further ado, which I say every time and it makes me look weird. And well, starting off, as I said, he was the 22nd ruler of the Joseon Dynasty. And he was born... Do you need to know when he was born? Yeah, because it's important information. So he was born in 1752 and he died in 1800, exactly, on August 18th. And he's also sometimes called Chongzhu the Great, which is very interesting. Well, not interesting, but you'll be able to see later because I will tell you why he is called Chongzhu the Great. Because not a lot of kings in the Joseon Dynasty that were on the throne have that title of the great after them. One ruler I can name is Sejong Dewang. And while Chongzhu, King Chongzhu, we don't often call him Chongzhu Dewang, but he is sometimes called that way because of all the things he did while he was on the throne. And well, there is a very important piece of information that I think you'll be very interested to find out about. King Chongzhu was Crown Prince Hado's son. Yeah, and I actually have a video on Crown Prince Hado that you should actually watch. Crown Prince Hado, to make it long story short, he was a Crown Prince of Joseon that was killed by his own father. He died by suffocating in a box in like this rice chest that his own father ordered him into. And yeah, he, he lived a very tragic life. And anyways, King Chongzhu was his son. And of course, after that incident with his father being dead and his grandfather and everything, he and his mother were kicked out of the palace. And his mother actually has a very, very famous memoir that you could also go read. I would very recommend it. I would very recommend it. I'm so sorry, my words aren't coming out today. And yeah, so anyways, he did not live in the palace for quite a long time. But of course, his grandfather, you know, even if he did kill his own son, he's still his own bloodline. And later on, he was adopted actually by his uncle. And that's how he was able to become the crown prince. But, you know, after his father died like that, and with all the conspiracy theories and everyone starting to think that he was a bit wronged, he had kind of a passion inside him to set things right, clear his father's name, and that is also why there are so, so, so many dramas about King Chongzhu. I think there was a recent one, like called Utsune Bugun The Red Sleeve, that I actually really enjoyed. And of course, there is Yi San, Wind of the Palace. Oh, Yi San. Yes, his birth name was actually Yi San, and it's quite famous. So yeah, if you don't want to go read some articles about him, I would say the dramas are a great way to, you know, get interested in it too. And while we near the end of this video, I also think it's going to be a little bit on the shorter side. I will tell you why he is called Chongju the Great by a lot of people. And it's because unlike, let's face it, a lot of the rulers of the Joseon Dynasty, he made a lot a lot of great attempts to try to reform the nation and make it better, make it fair, make it just. And he was known as like a very innovative king. He was interested in Western culture and he wanted to change society. And you know, because the social hierarchy of the Joseon dynasty, it definitely wasn't fair. And yeah, he isn't just remembered in history by like modern people as a great king. He was actually a very respected ruler of the time period as well. And yeah, on that high note, I think I'm going to end this video for today. And thank you for watching if you stayed until now. And see you next time. Thank you.